Hello friends, good to see you. My name is Aslam Sheikh, your host for this evening. I'm a president of Swiss Education Foundation, an exclusive platform to promote Switzerland as a study destination. This is the sixth talk show and broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn. Every alternate Thursday, we aim to bring in the eminent speakers to discuss the topic that will help you to explore this beautiful country, which has been the favorite destination for Bollywood shootings, family vacations, and definitely for education. This is the first of its kind program, which will take a deep dive into Switzerland and other important aspects related to the country like hospitality, Swiss lifestyle, culture, sustainability, Swiss institutes, career opportunities, and more. Our today's topic is meet the top culinary institute of the world. And to discuss this exciting subject, we have with us two chef, Chef David and Chef Christians. And let me uh, welcome our guest in the room. Hello, Chef. Hi there. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us. And let me quickly introduce both of you to our audience. So towards the left, what we see is the Chef Christian. And uh, he's the head of marketing and development culinary arts, Swiss education group, as well as culinary arts Academy, Switzerland. Accomplished sales, marketing and business development executive with successful track record in managing and developing regional and global student recruitment. He's got five plus years of experience in operation, sales and key account management and business development for SMEs in the food service industry and five plus years management experience for a large chain of restaurants providing result oriented leadership. And let's move on to our next chef, Chef David. Chef David is a trained in French gastronomy and food and beverage service in Paris. He joined the committee of the first Mexican gastronomic forum as humanity world heritage in 2011, a forum dedicated to introducing and showcasing Mexican cocoa beans and chocolate art abroad. Thank you both the chefs for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for having us. It's a great pleasure uh, to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you, chefs. So friends, uh, uh, let's start uh, our today's session. And uh, before we do a formal question and answer, and we have a lot of questions to ask to these two great chefs from the, uh, this one of the best, best institutes in the world and probably the number one, not probably the number one in Switzerland. OK, so uh, we know Switzerland. It's a landlocked country of towering mountains, deep alpine lakes, grassy valleys dotted with neat farms and small villages, a thriving cities that blend the old and the new. Switzerland is the nexus of the diverse physical and cultural geography of Western Europe, renowned for both for its natural beauty and its way of life. So on this introduction, let's begin today's session. So my first question uh, to Chef David. Chef, uh, we have heard so much about uh, Switzerland, about the culinary heritage, what it carries. Uh, we would like to know and learn from you, from our students and parents' point of view who are listening to you, that why Switzerland is so famous and what is that keeps Switzerland on top of the world for the culinary and gastronomy? Okay, thank you very much. So, so first, obviously, we need to look back at history, no? Uh, this history of uh, Cesar Ritz and the origins of luxury uh, hospitality, no? First, and then uh, you must know that the geographical situation of Switzerland puts us in a very, very privileged place uh, because uh, not only Switzerland has uh, uh, different resources, but we are surrounded, we're in the middle of Europe, and we are surrounded uh, by countries like France, by Spain, by Italy, uh, which are countries that are also very rich. And so here is, is this a uh, crossroad when we get a lot of influence from uh, Europe, the best of the best, we get the best of the best in food products and the best of the best in chefs also, uh, because here is a place where a lot of uh, uh, great chefs have, have started and done and followed their career. And obviously, uh, as, as, as Switzerland itself, there's a lot of wonderful resources, uh, world-known resources. So we can say uh, very briefly chocolate, we can say cheese, uh, we can say wine also. So uh, we also have lakes. 
So it puts us in a very wonderful place to, to play with, uh, with our creativity and gastronomy and develop. And, and obviously, we also have a clientele, customers from all over the world that are very exigent, that normally they travel everywhere. So they converge here. And also, it's a, it's a place where there's a high level of, the, of demand and, uh, for quality. Thank you very much, Chef David, uh, for this useful information. And just to add what Chef David said, I've got my research team suggesting me to speak and share something which is very interesting. Friends, uh, do you know that there are 400 different Swiss products officially recognized as a part of Switzerland's culinary heritage? And that speaks a lot about Switzerland. OK, great. So move on to uh, this topic. I will uh, uh, go to Chef Christian Chef. Uh, we have now learned a little bit about the heritage and the Swiss culture. We would like to know uh, from you because we're going to shift from Swiss culture to Swiss institutes. So that just make it more interesting. We would like to know that where does this culinary arts academy in Switzerland stands? Because uh, there are so many culinary schools around the world. Some are offering short term courses. Some are offering full fledged degrees. And it's always a point of debate how to choose the right school, whether to go for diploma or degree. But we'll come back to the program points later on. First thing you would like to know that what if the student wants to select a culinary school, what you would want to tell him that why should he look at culinary arts again? Um, that is a good question. And where does our school, the Culinary Arts Academy Switzerland, where does it stand? You mentioned it. We are definitely the best culinary school in Switzerland. But looking at our programs, looking at our history and experience and at our faculty and chefs, we are definitely also one of the finest in the world. We are not saying we are the best, we are the top of the world, but we are up there uh, because of the quality what we deliver. If a student is looking for a school and how shall he choose it, first of all, um, look at the programs. What are they delivering? Uh, what is the content? And um, think about what you would like. Is it pastry and chocolate? Is it culinary art? Or is it maybe a vegetarian cooking? Um, what you would like to do? And also, where do you see yourself going after that? You want to become a chef? You want to open up your own restaurant, own your own business? Find out all this and then look at the different institutions, what they offer. I'm very sure and I'm quite confident you will land in our school and in our programs because we offer different kinds of programs hands-on training for uh, these students. We train you to become a chef, a pastry chef, but we also train you um, with business knowledge, equip you to be able to open your own business very soon after graduation. Right, absolutely. It looks so exciting. In fact, I just noted uh, that, uh, that the Swiss, uh, the Culinary Arts Academy in this year was also ranked uh, among the top eight for the hospitality and luxury section by QS. And that speaks a lot about your institute, Chef. Congratulations on that top ranking. Thank you. OK, so let's go back to uh, the, the more uh, related to the points of culture and ingredients. Uh, Chef David, we would like to know that students always talks about when they talk about culinary. And when they combine the word culinary with Switzerland, then automatically the other things which comes in the conversation is Swiss cheese, Swiss chocolates and Swiss wines. So we would like to know from you that in real terms, when the student comes to Culinary Arts Academy or as a matter of fact in Switzerland to study, what kind of exposure, a real time exposure does he get in these three uh, important areas? OK, so uh, I can tell you just a brief story. When I was a young student in Mexico, a young culinary student in Mexico, uh, we talked about uh, Swiss cheese and Swiss chocolate in theory classes. And my dream was to one day uh, be able to taste it, first taste it. Huh? And then, uh, so my dream is, is more than accomplished. No, it came more than true, because not only by being here, I can taste it, I can cook with it. But I can also go and see and meet the producers and, and meet and see those beautiful landscapes where uh, some of the best uh, 
cheese in the world are produced, no? Also to meet the, 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 the best chefs, uh, chocolatier, chocolate chefs in the world, which are my colleagues, by the way. And uh, so just to let you know that uh, we hear about things, we learn about things, but here you can really leave it 100%. So not only in tasting wise, learning about the quality, the production methods, but also students can go directly. They can see those fields. They can see those regions with all with those uh, denominations of origins. They can see the cows. They can see the grass where everything starts. They can see all this art and this culinary tradition firsthand and then get impregnated by all this and imagine uh, that uh, level of culture, culinary culture, I like to call it culinary culture, uh, they, they will carry uh, after for their future professional lives, no? So it's, it's really uh, living that, in, in, that, in, that, in, in that culture and they will be able also to tell the story behind the culinary product, no? Not only cooking for the customers and sharing it, but also they can tell the story because they were there, no? So uh, you mean to say that the school takes an effort to make these things uh, available to the students right at the learning point of time to deal with these authentic products to use in their day-to-day -day kitchen? Of course, since day one, uh, my, my colleagues here teaching term one, uh, uh, one of the first classes have the introduction to these Swiss culinary products with tasting sessions, then working with those products. And then obviously there are several several visits as scheduled, uh, like, like excursions to take the students to directly to these places of production. And it's also something that you can do on a weekend. Huh? Here, uh, it's very easy as a student to go and uh, on, a, on the weekend, go and take a tour, a visit, a, visit a production area, visit the Gruyere area, those of the main uh, cheese or chocolate production uh, regions. It's very easy to go, it's very accessible. Wow, so friends, I have emphasized on this question for the reason is simple. In, in India, we have got a lot of institutes who are into hospitality and culinary and with their respect uh, uh, and with their uh, caliber, they are good in this local market. But what we have seen uh, and what you have noticed is that when you go to uh, experiment in kitchen in Indian institutes or any normal institute, the, you would not be having an access to the original authentic ingredients. And that's the biggest differentiating factor because you will never ever get to taste and learn how the actual cuisine is being made. And you just do the copy work uh, with the local discounted or just available ingredients to replace it. But here you're seeing that you are going to touch taste and also have an excursion to experience the real life story, which you can in incorporate into your learning. And this is how we, it makes you to be a better authentic chef as compared to others. So thank you, Chef David. Uh, let's move to uh, Christian. Christian, uh, uh, like here in Bollywood, we have got uh, big stars like Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan. And uh, we, we know that in the chef world in Switzerland, we have got one very famous chef, Chef Mosman, uh, who is a star and who is a celebrity chef. And uh, just my team suggested me uh, to speak about it. So he's a two, two Michelin star chef, had 120 diplomas, 50 gold medals four uh, generations of British royal family he has served to and he's a chef to British prime minister and US presidents. Now, this stature of chef is connected with Culinary Arts Academy is something is very interesting to know more about it. So would you like to speak that what this connection with Chef Mozeman is actually about and how does it translate to the students point of view from learning from this rich experience? Definitely. Uh, we are very fortunate here at the Culinary Arts Academy to have that relationship with Chef Anton Mosiman. You mentioned all uh, his accomplishments. He is really one of the best chefs, one of the most famous chefs um, in the world. He actually lives in the region um, just across the lake in Montreux. That's where he uh, lives. We established that relationship many years ago and um, Chef Mosiman, all the things you mentioned, all his diplomas, all his gold medals, we actually have a small museum right on campus, uh, a culinary heritage center, we call it the Mosiman Collection, to really honor the work and the achievements of this great chef. The gold medals are in the museum, the diplomas are there, but many things uh, more. He has collected many cookbooks, uh, many kind of culinary artifacts, actually. They are on display here to showcase 
uh, that uh, that accomplishment and also our relationship. What does that mean for our students? Well, the Heritage Center for our students is kind of a research area because they have access to uh, hundreds and hundreds of different cooking books, culinary books, but they also can browse through thousands of menu cards from Chef Mosiman, menus he has cooked for prime ministers and presidents and the Queen of England. They can get inspired, they can um, develop their own creativity, and then they go back in the kitchen with Chef David and um, get the practical experience. Uh, Chef Mosiman is always uh, traveling between Montreux and London because uh, he still has uh, uh, his private fine dining club in London, his catering company. But every time he is here, he comes over to the school, he visits our students. Um, he is kind of a mentor uh, to our students. He has been a trusted advisor to our academy as well. And here's some news I want to share with you. Um, Anton Mosiman has accepted our offer to become actually the honorary dean of our academy. Wow, um, congratulations. A small session in October uh, with him. Um, that brings us even closer together. And we are really fortunate to benefit from the wealth of experience from such a great chef. Superb. Congratulations on that particular achievement. And so, friends, that's a huge, huge bonus, you know, for what you get as a student. Uh, not only to get access to the modern chef like Chef David and Chef Christian who are in front of us, but also to get uh, uh, the other perspective, a very traditional uh, perspective of uh, learning from a different style of cooking from the great legendary chef like Chef Anthony Mosman. So, uh, and it's not only this, that you just look around the museum, as Chef Christian said, that you can have an access to the secret recipes what he has produced and you can experiment with that in the culinary arts academy kitchen thank you very much uh, chef for this uh, piece of information and now since he is a dean i believe that that adds more value uh, to your learning experience at caa campus uh, chef david moving to the next point uh, we know that this culinary field is more on to be the practicals rather than learning only theory from the classroom uh, we understand that uh, uh, having a practical experience and hands-on experience is very, very important and crucial part of the whole learning experience. Would you like to talk more about that, how Culinary Arts Academy assures the maximum practical exposure while students are there uh, in Switzerland? Okay, uh, so I won't mention any names, but I have worked in uh, prestigious schools all over the world. And I can tell that here in Culinary Arts Academy, this is the place where I, I think the students are in con constant contact with the kitchens, with the food products, and in constant practice. So that is thanks to our uh, high-end uh, facilities. Obviously, we have beautiful kitchens, fully equipped. They're full of technology, and there are many kitchens here in this campus. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, of kitchens here to practice. Then also uh, another very important thing is that we are a team of uh, culinary structures that we all have a different area of expertise. So we really complement each other and we can approach uh, very different angles from the culinary practice, you no, know, from large scale buffets to uh, demonstrations to uh, fine dining service uh, in, in real life uh, restaurants, uh, hosting real customers from pastry uh, workshops, chocolate workshops, etc. So the whole range of all the different applications of the culinary learning is here. The whole range of different types of, uh, of uh, kitchens and, and workshops and, and facilities required to teach that are also here. All the equipment necessary to learn almost everything, it's also here. So. Uh, all that contributes to uh, uh, how access accessible it is for the students and for us to be in constant practice, no, in constant practice. So uh, many hours a day, full practice. And so what, what happens is that after the, their studies here, they are immediately employable, no? They can immediately uh, go and, and take a position because they have been in constant contact with, with the food, with the products, with the techniques, etc. No? So it's very, very intensive. But it's a great privilege because here we really have a lot of practice time with them. Sorry, Chef, as you may rightly mention that you have a lot of practice on campus. 
uh, do the students also get an opportunity to practice in the real world in terms of internship or is there part of a course when they study uh, maybe i take that uh, question definitely all our programs also include an internship which is practical experience four to six months in the real world real restaurants hotels resorts um, in switzerland or anywhere else in the world so they get um, also to work with, with professional chefs in real life professional kitchens practical experience and we support them even um, to get them in contact with those industry partners to help them find the right fit uh, for their internships wow that's great so friends as you heard that you get an opportunity not only to do your practicals uh, regularly on campus and have got the access to one of the best facilities available but also you get an opportunity to go uh, out in the industry take back your learning and put it into practice in the real real world so in the term form of internship chef uh, question, i've got another question related to this uh, that if i'm satisfied i'm excited about what i have uh, discussed so far as a student and i have heard uh, you saying good things about the schools and the college then what are the different programs options do i have uh, to choose at your school all right um well in principle we offer three different kind of product uh, programs we have a short uh, vocational style program we call it swiss grand diploma this is uh ranging from one to three study terms each study term here at the culinary arts academy is uh, 11 weeks which is almost three months so the swiss grand diploma is really practical focused um, picking up the skills, getting um, the atmosphere in the kitchen, um, short vocational style, hands-on learning. Here you have even the option to choose uh, classical culinary arts, pastry and chocolate arts, or even choose to be trained in vegetarian and plant-based culinary arts. That's the Swiss Grand Diploma, get your skills, industry ready, be a chef. If you are a student and you're looking for a little bit more, you want to qualify yourself, you want to uh, receive an academic degree, a bachelor degree, we offer that program as well. It's a total of three years, three uh, study years. It includes two internships, two times six months practical experience. Here, uh, we learn the fundamentals as well, but we add on a little bit more uh, business management, business plan, uh, marketing and leadership training to our students. Basically, they are ready to become a culinary manager. They are ready to become an entrepreneur and open up their own business. Last but not least, we have a postgraduate program, a Master of Arts uh, in Culinary Business Management. For professionals uh, who want to qualify themselves further, they want to advance their career, for career changers who want to venture into the culinary industry, that is a great program short as well intense two study terms internship dissertation and get an academic master degree or master of arts so we have different programs for different uh types of students always depending what are they looking for what is their career goal then we can suggest the right training program oh uh, very well explained chef in a, such a short time and a very to the point uh friends so just to uh re re, re confirm what chef said so uh, because in India, most of the time, uh, and the parents who are listening to us, most of the time you misunderstand uh, that being a chef is also like being learning into hospitality management. So what happens is that if you want to be a chef, there is a dedicated program which is dedicated for be you being a chef. So you don't have to go through a hospitality management pathway and study about the management wherein you want to be a master chef for example so uh, the chef already mentioned to you the diplomas for the short-term courses uh, do some internships go back to the industry if you are looking for a bachelor course and i understand that a lot of parents also give importance to having a full-fledged degree than just a diploma if you have got that mindset then definitely you have got a full three years degree with two internships and that gives you an exposure uh, of a uh, formal education whilst being in the culinary fields and uh, what Chef rightly said, there could be many students who, who you, if you could be uh, one of them who has just graduated with some other degree and now develop your passion towards culinary, or you were always interested, but you couldn't get a chance to you know, try your hands in the kitchen, 
then uh, not to uh, lose on to the opportunity and not to go back to the diploma level and sit with the 18 years old kids. You have got the master course to go into the uh, to the institute and learn at a master level. So I think it's it gives a very very clear uh, entry points for the different audiences and the type of students. Thank you, Chef, uh, for this information. Uh, let's go back to uh, Chef David. Chef David, one very important thing which uh, uh, Chef Christian touched upon is the uh, is a vegetarian course. Uh, India is one of the largest uh, vegetarians, uh, no people here living in, and that the, we we see this. There's a hesitation for the people being a vegetarian. They don't want to go into the non-vegetarian side of culinary arts. And I think that could be an interesting point wherein they can come to Culinary Arts Academy and learn this vegetarian course. So with the rise in veganism, how Culinary Arts Academy is preparing the students in this area? If you want to focus on this particular piece. Okay, obviously, uh, I would let after uh, Chef Christian explain you more about that program. But what I can tell you is that uh, here we are always up to date on the trends uh, whatever is ha whatever is happening outside in the industry, so we're always up to date. We follow that trend, but also we are very respectful of sustainability. We are very uh, respectful of using local products, of uh, of, of of supporting our local producers. Uh, we're concerned about health, uh, so uh, that is a philosophy that we all share here, including obviously my colleagues, chef instructors. And so, uh, for me, uh, the, the best cuisine in the world is the is the healthiest, the most local, the freshest. And it turns out that uh, vegetable plant the diet it it really matches that philosophy. So uh, I have uh, different colleagues that are vegetarian. So here in school, we really leave uh, that culture of vegetarianism, uh, and, and obviously, uh, it's present even if it's not. Uh, my class or another colleague's class, but there's a huge class now here, a huge course being developed and continue to, to being worked around vegetarianism. So uh, it's very present. We love it. It's a philosophy that we all share. I think that it's the future. Uh, it's the future of gastronomy. And we are all uh, happy to, to prepare it. I, I myself can tell you that uh, as in Indian cuisine, Mexican cuisine, it fits perfectly to vegetarianism. Uh, by the way, I just gave a, a class of, of Bex Mexican cuisine that is, we call it Mexican because it was plant-based vegetarian Mexican cuisine. So again, it's a trend and we love it. We love to have it. And here in Switzerland also, it's, uh, we, are seeing, we are seeing it everywhere. So for, uh, for students uh, with that uh, aim, it's, it's, it's a perfect environment because uh, we have all the resources here. We are all trained for that. And obviously there's a path, no? There's a specific path for vegetarian students, yeah. no? I'm just going to add on what Chef said. Uh, we, we follow trends, we see what's going on in the industry, so we reacted very quickly. And as one of the first uh, school culinary schools in the world, we actually uh, established a vegetarian uh, program. It is currently a diploma program. We are developing it even further that you can go the whole bachelor pathway in that vegetarian, uh, plant-based, vegan uh, culinary program, which we can offer to students. Absolutely. And we have a lot of dietitians and health consultants here in India. They are also emphasizing more on to live on plant-based food. And I guess uh, that it fits well what Chef David also rightly said, that this looks to be a new big trend coming in and to follow it. Okay, great. So on this point, sir, moving from culture, from academics to now more of a student life, let's also learn that how you're going to live uh, on campus and what's the facilities from a living point of view, what Culinary Arts Academy has got to offer you as a chef, Christian, if you'd like to throw some more lights on how the student lo life looks like. Definitely. Um, over here at the Academy, we, we, we take care of the students. That also uh, means um, we offer accommodation right on campus. So when you study with us here in Switzerland, you will also live on campus in that safe and secure environment. And you don't need to travel to and from the school every morning and evening. You wake up, you get ready, you go downstairs and you see chef already in the kitchen, you're in your classroom. So this is taken care of. Meals for the students are taken care of as well because we as a school provide that. That's one point. 
uh, which is all there. We have great facilities on campus um, as well. We have study areas, we have lounges, we have libraries. We have our own small mini marts for the students as well, where they can grab a coffee, a cold drink. Um, so all this is here as well. But um, classes are from Monday to Friday. Chef mentioned already on weekends, students used to travel, but we also offer lots of activities for our students on weekends in their free time. In fact, one of our colleagues here at the Academy, he is the sports and leisure coordinator. So he organizes sports uh, activities. They go hiking, they go mountain climbing, uh, swimming, snowboarding and skiing in winter, obviously. We take them to different towns to uh, uh, discover Switzerland a little bit more. So all those is, uh, is here available to our students. Um, and Chef mentioned the location of Switzerland in Europe. Since we are in the center of Europe, it's so easy to travel around. Actually, from our school, from our campus, where we are right now, and if you walk down the street five minutes, we are already in France. Uh, there's a train station right outside. If you take the train, in three and a half hours, you're in Milano in Italy. In four hours, you're in Venice in Italy. So all this is available for our students uh, in terms also, it's not all about uh, studying, um, yeah. We want to help them to have a work-life balance uh, as well, to experience Switzerland and to have a good time uh, on campus as well. Absolutely, Chef Christian. I, I really miss my opportunity of learning and studying <laughs> at your campus. But nevertheless, I'm in a good space whereby I'm helping students to you know, find out your beautiful campus to come and study. And as you rightly said, it's very important from a student's point of view uh, to also explore the country, explore the culture, explore the region. It's not only about just a piece of degree, it's more about meeting and understanding the different culture and having a different mindset uh, towards the trends which are uh, going around you. So uh, very, very important, uh, Chef Christian. Last question to Chef David uh, before I come back to you. Uh, Chef David, we, the way we touched upon a vegetarianism, uh, we would, I also like to know because in India, we also have an uh, inclination and it's very much in fashion to talk about pastry and chocolates and it looks more fashionable as compared to the culinary arts for most of the students. So what do you want to say about this particular exposure uh, in terms of the course which is offered at school? Okay, uh, so first, uh, uh, I have great colleagues here also that are in charge of the chocolate program, of the pastry program, which uh, really cover the uh, boutique uh, side of the profession. That means if you one day want to be a chocolatier, have your chocolate boutique or a pastry chef and you have your pastry shop, that is covered. But also everything that is uh, plated desserts, uh, show pieces, something that goes more into the artistic side and also uh, serving customers. So all these uh, wide variety of different applications for pastry and chocolate arts, we covered it here in school. And obviously, uh, they uh, they taste everything because uh, all the, everything that is produced also here is, is available for the students on campus. As Christian was saying, in our buffet, everyday uh, school uh, dining rooms, students can taste from every single discipline what the other students are preparing. No, so it's it's a great uh, way to receive feedback also from their colleagues. And uh, obviously, uh, here, when you produce chocolate for your classes, you're using the best chocolates in the world, the best chocolates in the world uh, to, 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 to make chocolate, no? So imagine uh, how uh, the, because something very important is to train the palate also uh, for a yeah. chef, including a pastry chef and a, and, a, and, a, and a chocolatier, to train that palate. So the palate will be better trained than if you were baking pastry or making chocolate anywhere else in the world because you are used to that quality of product. So that means you're going to take that level of exigence back into your countries and that's the quality that you are going to serve for your future customers, for all the students that are uh, looking at us, uh, watching, and uh, that puts them immediately in a big, bigger advantage compared to other uh, pastry and chocolate chefs that haven't lived uh, this uh, uh, this uh, or haven't been trained to that quality in the place of origins of that uh, product. No, so yeah, uh, the craft is being developed, the the skills will be developed, but also the palate and the knowledge of the highest quality pastry and chocolate uh, products ingredients are. It's going to be learned also here. No, very very well said, Chef David. 
and i think it excites a lot of students and parents to you know to create and give one more reason why they should look at culinary arts academy and in switzerland so because everybody knows that swiss chocolates are one of the best in the world and what would be the best place otherwise to go to switzerland and go to the number one institute to learn by the way if you are looking for any trainee who wants to have a training for changing the palate so i'm ready to apply for that particular <laughs> <laughs> okay so on this note we are moving to the last question of this session to chef uh, christian chef uh, after understanding and learning about uh, your beautiful programs and your institutes and your accolades uh, the last and very strong question is uh, what are my career opportunities you know after the completion of course how do i see what kind of jobs industries uh, would be available and how culinary arts academy will help me to take my next big step all right um well the first answer and the first option is very obvious being a chef um that is uh, one career opportunity and we have the training programs here to prepare our students for it the internships will definitely help because throughout their studies with the internship you get already that practical experience in the real life world and you put that on your cv uh, when you move on uh, to the next career we also have career coaches on campus who will help our students for the next step for the first career after graduation so being in chef is one of them i mentioned in our bachelor program we also look into business management entrepreneurship business plan and marketing so students are also quite ready to be an entrepreneur open up your own restaurant um, develop your own business idea open up your own pastry shop your own chocolate shop this is a career as well um nowadays um it has a little bit changed what you expect from a chef. A chef is more like a culinary manager, especially if you look like executive chef in one of those big hotels or resorts. We train the students for this as well. This is one part, this is one direction, but you can very well be uh, working for one of those multinational companies who are in the food service industry. In fact, the headquarter from Nestle, Nestle Worldwide and Nestle Professionals is actually across the lake. Uh, and they are an industry partner of ours. Um, so you can uh, go in this direction, food product development, development chef, and even sales marketing are consulting. Uh, all these are opportunities and we expose our students to it. We help them go in this direction and get them the contact. So it's actually a world of opportunities available. It's not just uh, oh, I become a chef and I need to spend the rest of my life in the kitchen. That's possible if, if you would like. But there are so many uh, opportunities all around the world uh, available to students. Wow. So I think you opened up the new doors and new dimension uh, to look at the career because traditionally, again, the parents get caught into this particular dilemma. They don't see uh, the, the other side of the story, other side of the business. And they see that, okay, we don't want necessarily to be a chef, but we want to run a restaurant, you know? So I think you answered very well by saying that you can be an entrepreneur. You can run your own restaurant in that way. You can be a food consultant, sales and marketing. And then this is how you explore the different career opportunities by being a chef. So it's no longer you're just going to be uh, ending your career in kitchen. It's much more and beyond that. So thank you very much. Chef Christian, you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to add on because we, we have two examples of former culinary students sitting in front of you. <laughs> one uh, is now a, a chef lecturer. He's actually a teacher. And the other one, that's myself. I went into the uh, direction business development, sales um, and marketing. Yep. We all started out in a culinary school. We all started out in training kitchens many, many years ago. But it shows you that what uh, uh, opportunities are really available. Absolutely. That's two live examples, friends, in front of you to explore the world of culinary beyond your uh, set imagination. So thank you, chefs, for your time and your insights. It was really, really a pleasure to have your discussion on this particular topic. Um, a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting us, for giving us the opportunity to speak uh, to, to students and parents. Uh, and we hope to see many of our viewers and listeners very soon here in Switzerland on one of our campuses. Thank you so much for having us. 
Thank you, Chef David, as well for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, so friends, thank you for watching this show on me, the top culinary institute of the world. If you still have any further information or you would like to ask any question uh, on study in Switzerland, please feel free to connect us on our helpline number. That's double eight seven double nine four two double zero one, or visit our website swisseducation.com. Our experienced counselors will be happy to assist you instantly. My name is Aslam Sheikh, President of Swiss Education Foundation, signing off with a promise to come back again on 16th September. Yes, 16th September, sharp at 5 p.m. with another uh, guest speaking on an interesting education topic. Until then, think Switzerland, think Swiss education.